Hi, my name is Matthias, and today we're going to talk about APIs in banking, specifically at API strategies for banks. This video is going to build on top of what we've talked about in the last episode with the banking stack and how it has changed by API. So if you haven't seen it, I recommend that you watch it. But for now, I will tell you that, well, we have the banking stack and APIs are going to change the banking stack. So we have a new bank banking stack that consists of a banking product as the foundation, which has an API. This is connected to a channel that brings that banking product finally to a customer. Now, because the product is appified, so to say, the channel can be exchanged. Or if you have a channel, you can put another API product underneath. So this new stack is really um, made up of interchangeable components. And interestingly, those components don't always need to be made in-house like they used to be in banks at least. Now you can put a channel from the outside in, you can put a product from the outside in and you can reconfigure this channel. You can even reconfigure it in such a way that you don't have a channel, you don't have a product, you just own a marketplace in between. There are so many different um, reconfiguration options that I want to just show those reconfiguration options and show what are these options for banks and which of these options exist for fintechs in these new stacks. So I will put these options um, in a matrix uh, and there will be an X and a Y axis. On the X axis here, you can see the ownership of the customer relationship. Who owns the customer relationship? Is it the bank or is it someone outside the bank? And on the Y axis, you can see, well, is the banking product underneath from the bank or is it from someone else? And here are actually three options. So it's not only inside and outside, but it's also a mix of both where you take some of those products from inside and some of those products from the outside. So in the end, you will get a three by two matrix, so to say, with um, different options. Let's start in the bottom left here. In the bottom left, we have the traditional configuration where there is the customer, which is outside the bank, of course, and the channel and the banking product are provided by the bank. So they're both provided in-house. The bank has full control of them, but they're separated by an API. Could be an internal API in that case because there's no external parties involved. Now, one of the ways how you can reconfigure it is by removing the channel and giving the channel to someone else outside the bank. If you do that, you have banking as a service and you kind of enable this niche market. You enable very personalized, tailored experiences. You enable the long tail market that we have seen in another video. Now, such banks uh, typically don't do this in their home market. So if you already have a channel with your um, to your customers in a home market, then I see that banks sometimes do this outside their home market where they um, offer banking as a service product. Another option of reconfiguration is plug and play banking, which is actually more popular than a banking as a service to existing banks. With plug and play banking, you basically extend your portfolio of banking products. If in your portfolio of banking products, you have a gap or something that you haven't offered so far, but you would like to offer in the future, then plug and play banking is really the way to go. You still own your customer, you still own the channel, but what you will do is you now source banking products from other banks or from other players in the industry. You don't need to have all the banking products in-house. 
So the only thing that you consume via your own channel is an API. Now, there is also another configuration possibility that's called banking as a platform. And with banking as a platform, the bank kind of extends the product portfolio by uh, just in the same way as with plug and play banking. But in addition, it also opens up the front of the value chain, so to say, and allows other players to um, be the channel to the customer. So it's kind of a mix out of um, plug and play banking and banking as a service. Now, there are also two strategies that are only available for fintechs. Well, why do I say it's only for fintechs? Because you don't need to be a bank, because you don't offer any banking products at all. And the first option is you're a consumer of the banking as a service products, right? So you're basically um, the uh, <clears throat> music streaming app that also has banking functionalities. You don't need to be a bank, you're not regulated like a bank, but you still can offer banking services by using banking as a service. And the last option, really interesting, is a marketplace option where you are not a bank, but um, you kind of offer the brokerage, so to say, between those that have a channel to a customer and those that have banking products. You yourself don't need to have the banking product. You don't need to have the channel to the customer. You're just providing the middle layer uh, and kind of uh, smoothening, so to say, smoothening um, the interaction between channel and product. So there you have it. Those are six strategies for banks and fintechs uh, that use the new banking stack. And this new banking stack is, of course, built on APIs. The players in this banking stack are either providers of APIs or they are consumers of APIs. My name is Matthias. This video has been brought to you by Software AG.